Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Vivek. I am a software developer. I make videos about Kubernetes, containers, Go as a programming language, and uh, about software engineering in in general. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about this sub command that kubectl supports. That is that is explained in in one of the previous videos. We have discussed about some of the tips and tricks that we can use uh, with kubectl to make things more easier and and make our life a bit more productive so in this particular video we are going to look into kubectl explain if we talk about why do we exactly use kubectl explain so let's say you have a, a resource manifest right any resource manifest and you are not able to understand a, a certain field why what is the use of that certain field uh, what is the data type and why are we actually using that field so in that particular case we can use kubectl explain to get details about a specific field excuse me uh, in in a resource manifest so let's just go ahead and first of all try to try to create a manifest right so let's say i have i have a deployment manifest so create deployment and as always i have a kubernetes cluster up and running uh, the, the master's node master node's name is kind control plane and let's just go ahead and try to create a deployment manifest so kubectl create deployment this should be in in default namespace image that we are going to use is nginx and name is nginx right and we don't actually want to create the deployment we want to create the manifest so this is how the command is going to look like now if you don't understand this particular command maybe you can you can refer to one of my previous videos where i actually explained how we can use kubectl to actually generate resources manifests right if i press enter i should have a, a manifest named deploy.yaml right and this deploy.yaml is actually going to have the the deployments manifest right now if i just go ahead and try to look into the fields that are being used here so specifically uh, top level field so api version kind metadata spec and status now let's say we don't exactly know what is this strategy field right so we want to figure out what is this strategy field in deployments manifest under spec right so what we can do is we can just go ahead and try to write kubectl explain right and deployment dot spec dot strategy right so let me just go ahead and try to do that so kubectl explain right deployment dot spec right because this is deployments manifest and in deployments manifest we want to figure out the the meaning of spec dot strategy right so spec dot strategy and and here we go so we are able to see the details about this particular field it simply says that this particular fields type is object uh, uh, in in yaml an object is is represented using key and value pairs uh, maybe we will have to discuss about that in in one of the future videos but object can simply be meant as as key and value pairs so it says that strategy is of type object right and here is the description so it says the deployment strategy to use to replace existing pods with the new one right so yeah i mean we are not going to to look into this in more detail but we what i'm trying to say is if you want to figure out what does this particular field actually mean you can just use kubectl explain right and these are these are the fields that are supported for example rolling update and and the type similarly let's say i have to i have to figure out uh, what is the significance of containers right so what i can do is i can i can say kubectl explain spec dot template dot spec dot containers right so kubectl explain deployment dot spec dot template dot spec dot containers this is right spec dot deployment dot spec 
dot template dot spec dot containers right and we should be able to see the details about about the containers field right so it says containers is a slice or or a list of object right and and description about that is list of containers belonging to the pod right so this field is going to specify all the containers that belong to to the pods that are going to be run as part of this deployment right so what I'm trying to highlight here is we can try to figure out type as well as description of, of that particular of that particular uh, field that we have specified, right? And these are all the fields that are that are supported for this particular object, right? For example, command, environment, image, and, and everything. Okay. Right? So now, now that we know we can use kubectl explain to figure out the data type of the fields and and sometimes we can figure out all the fields that are supported so for example if we if we have to let's say create a manifest of pod right so what we can do is we can either use kubectl run like we have discussed earlier or we can use kubectl explain to figure out all the fields and then we can we can create a manifest specifying those fields so let's just go ahead and try to do that so kubectl explain pod right and it, it it says pod has these many fields right so api was in kind metadata and spec now the only problem is uh, you must know what are all the fields that are mandatory and and what are all the fields that are that are not right so in that case i know that we will have to specify api version kind metadata and spec but we don't necessarily need to need to specify status right so let me just go ahead and try to create a a, a manifest by looking at this particular description so let's just go ahead and try to specify api version right and we can figure out api version of pod either by looking at the at the kubernetes api reference or by looking here itself so it says version is v1 right so api version is actually combination of group and version group this particular resource belongs to right and and the version so again if you are not very sure about group and versioning i, I have another video already created so maybe you can refer to that so api version is v1 and then we have we see kind so we know we are going to create pod right and we can see kind here as well moving further we have metadata right so metadata but we don't exactly know what are all the fields that are supported inside metadata right so now what we can do is cube cutter explain and then pod dot metadata right and we are going to get the de get the details about about pod metadata and these are all the fields that are supported right so annotations cluster name and and everything again you will have to know what are all the fields required fields to to use this this is not actually very great way to create the manifests but this is a way uh, using which we can do that now i know that we will have to either specify name or we will have to specify generate name right so i'm going to go ahead and specify name here right and name is going to be let's say pod one and i'm going to save it with the name pod.yaml right now now that we have specified metadata we have to specify spec right again spec data type of spec is object but we don't exactly know what are all the fields that are supported inside spec right so let's just go ahead and try to explain pod dot spec right and again we are getting every detail about pod dot spec and pod dot spec is of type object and these are all the fields that are supported inside that object so again we don't necessarily need to specify all these fields right we just we just have to specify the details about about the container that that we want to run and let's see 
we we have that we have that here and and it is it is marked as required so list of containers belonging to this particular pod now if i say spec okay and then containers right now data type of containers is list of object right and list of object in yaml are specified using this hyphen right so again now i don't exactly know what are all the fields that are supported for containers right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say kubectl explain pod dot spec dot containers right and now we would be able to see everything that is supported for for containers right so arguments command that we want to run environment and image right so we will have to specify image let's say we want to specify image as nginx and i think name should also be be there and obviously data type is string and it is required so name is also nginx and, and that's it this is how we can use cube cuttle explain to actually figure out how or, or actually form manifest of a particular resource right if i just go ahead and try to create this this resource now we should be able to create this successfully without any issues and and here we go right so yeah i mean another thing that i i would like to discuss about is cube cuttle autocomplete so for example let's say uh, if you have uh, if you have installed or set up cube cuttle autocomplete you can actually use tab to complete your sub command so for example cube cuttle cube cuttle create deployment right this was this was auto completed so i just wrote dep and when i when i hit tab this was auto completed and then hyphen n and again if i press tab all the namespaces could be listed here and we can use either one of them that we want to right so setting up uh, autocomplete for cube cuttle is pretty easy i would say you can use this particular document i would maybe link it in, in the description that you can use to set up autocomplete apart from that the other thing that i would like to discuss about is watch so for example let's say you want to get every pod all the pods from default namespace but you want to keep a watch on this particular pod watch on pods from this particular namespace so you specify watch right and now this would be refreshed every every two seconds the problem with this particular particular command is if you have you if you have set alias k to refer to cube cuttle in that particular case watch is not going to work by default right so here i have set up k as as alias to cube cuttle right and in that case watch is not going to work by default so you will have to set another alias uh, watch equals to something like this right and in that case things are things are going to work for you so yeah this this was uh, pretty much it for this particular video uh, in in some of the next videos i'm going to cover what exactly is helm how do we use that and why do we actually use that and maybe i would actually create helm chart for one of the applications that we have wrote in in one of the previous videos and then we will we will go from there so yeah this was pretty much it if you if you think this is this was helpful maybe you can you can consider liking and subscribing to, to the channel i'll i'll see you in, in the next one